This is a marvelous time to lift up God's name and praise, is it not? That's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day for me for multiple reasons, not the least of which is the worshiping of God, but also for the welcoming of my new wife, uh, Penny, uh, to be among us and uh, have our first worship service in a, what I consider a new work. I, I hope you see that this way, that what she and I are about to do together is going to be a new work. And uh, we look forward to that. I am grateful for the elders uh, for giving me the time off that they have over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, been uh, been rather busy boy. We've been packing Penny up and getting her here. Uh, my uh, Her stuff is sitting literally in a U-Haul truck in the front yard of my house. And we're about to move into our new beautiful home that you have helped prepare for us to have as a new beautiful home. And so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the time off they gave me. The elders, when I asked them for the time off so that I might get married, they said, well, of course you can get married. And, uh, and in the process of that, they said, but we want you to go ahead and take off the Sunday that you're referring, returning back as well. And, uh, and that was a very generous offer for the elders to allow that. And so because I'm not going to be the speaker this morning, I get the privilege of introducing to you to Kim Squires. We're grateful for him and his wife of 47 years, and we're grateful for your presence here, and, and I look forward to that. They, uh, they are members at the Kasi congregation and uh, servants there, and we're grateful to have Kim with us today. The main reason why I'm supposed to be standing here is to introduce what's up on the board, and that is the JAM program. If you are a visitor here today, we want you to be aware of this project. Every Sunday during the sermon period, our children, ages three to the third grade, are invited to come forward. We'll sing a song. Eddie will lead them, and they'll be dismissed to a class just for them. So if those children will come on forward and uh, have a seat up here, and we'll enjoy a, a song, and then they'll be dismissed to their class. Good morning. How wonderful it is to be here this morning. You know, there's no greater place to be than with God's family. It doesn't matter where you're at. As long as you're with God's family, it's a wonderful place. This morning, I want to say Happy Father's Day to all of you fathers. Those of us that have raised children. You know, I was fortunate enough to have three sons. My wife was unfortunate enough to have three sons. But it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing to see all of them grow up, become strong 
Christian men marry strong Christian women and have strong Christian children. And there's nothing greater for a father than to be able to see this in their life. And so this morning, I'm very blessed, and I pray that you're blessed also. I know if you were in Bible class this morning, you was with me in, in 2 Timothy. Well, we're going to go back to 2 Timothy, but chapter 1 this time. As, as I was studying for Bible class this week and, and deciding on chapter 3 of, of 2 Timothy, and because even though Paul was writing to Timothy about the times, he was writing to us about the times. And as I was preparing for my sermon, I will tell you this morning, I changed my sermon this morning before I got here. Uh, it was heart, uh, heavy on my heart this morning and woke up at 4 o'clock this morning studying on this sermon. This is not the ster- sermon I prepared for here. But for some reason, I felt like this was the sermon that, that needed to be for me, if no one else. And so 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting here in verse 3 through verse 14. Thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with clear conscience as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling. Not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and in which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am not convinced that he is able to guard until that day that has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and of love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted in us. Now as Paul's writing to Timothy here, he said, you know, I know that you have been raised up in the faith. You had a grandmother that raised you and a mother that raised you in the faith. You know, Timothy didn't have a father that was strong in the word, did he? Timothy's father was a Gentile. But he had a grandmother and a mother, which is very important for all of us to realize the importance of mothers in our lives. And it's so wonderful that we honor our fathers and our mothers both throughout the year. But it's important for us to stop and think about the importance of our mothers and grandmothers. You know, I said for many years, I have preached for about 15 years at different congregations, and over the years, I've always said the strength of the church were the women, not the men. Because nearly everywhere I preach, there's way more women than there are men in the congregation. The women keep us strong. Men, we are, we are to be the ones that stand up for the truth, to make sure that the truth is done. I thought Paul is telling Timothy here, he says, you were raised in the word. Yeah, Timothy was raised up under the old law, and then under Paul, he was raised up under the new. But t- he told Timothy, he said, you understand what the law is. Stand strong in it. Stand true in it. But then he gets down here at verse 13, he says, follow the pattern of the sound words. You know, this morning, I I thought Ken was going to get into my sermon, but he didn't. But it's important. Do we follow the sound words? Do we follow the sound doctrine? You know, 
King James says to hold fast the form of sound words. America Sanders says, hold the pattern of sound words. So do we ask ourselves, are we holding the pattern today that was given to us in the scriptures of old? Do we hold the pattern that, that Paul told Timothy about? We need to ask ourselves, this, are we where we need to be? What do we keep? Do we keep the truth? Do we keep the soundness? You know, I don't know about you, but I know that I spent quite a few years as a certified welder. I'm not a fabricator. There's a difference between a welder and a fabricator. And if you learn to weld, you, you understand the difference. A fabricator can, can take and make things without a pattern. I can't. I, I'm not artistic enough to make things. But I could read a blueprint. And I could make some very unique things with a blueprint. But I had to have that pattern to know exactly what part went where. As Ken said, I needed the instructions. And without the instructions, you mess up. In 1983, we went to my mother and dad's in Gainesville, Texas at Christmas. And we had bought the boys a swing set. That's not a smart idea when you live in Ozona, Texas, is to buy a swing set. You take it to, to Gainesville, Texas, and you decide to put it together. If you remember the year of 83, that's when we had all the freezes. We're there at my parents, and it's freezing cold, and we're trying to put a swing set together outside. The mistake was we give my little brother instructions. My little brother does not read instructions. He looks at the pictures. We get about three-fourths of the way through, and we got parts left over. And I said, where do these go? And he said, I don't know. So I go back, and I look at the instruction. I said, we got to tear this thing all apart. That was step two. He said, well, it wasn't on the picture. My little brother from then on never got to read the instructions for our jobs that we were putting together. Instructions are very important, aren't they? It's very important to follow the structure, the, the pattern, the instructions that, that are given the way they've been given. So many times people want to change the pattern. Why? Feels good for them. They want something that makes them feel good. That's not what God gave us the pattern for. God gave us the pattern so he could feel good about us doing what's right. That's what's important. You know, I've watched my wife. She can sew, and, and, and she can take a pattern, and she can make nearly anything. But I have figured out on the pattern, when a woman buys a pattern, that you've got to know which line to follow on that pattern. Because there's three different sizes in there. And if you start out on, on the small size and start putting the large size in there, it don't fit. We cannot change the pattern that God has designed for us. So we need to make sure that we hold true to the pattern. What is the pattern that we have? The pattern is to make sure that we understand why we're here. That we're here to serve God and to obey God. We're here to hold fast to the sound words. You know, it, it's important that we as children of God, that we hold to the sound words. You know, there's men of old that, that held to the sound words. In 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 13 and 14, And the importance of holding to the words is, And the master who went to summon Micaiah said to him, Behold the words of the prophets, which one accord are favorable to the king. Let your word be like the word of the one of them, and speak favorable. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, what the Lord says to me, that I will speak. 
You know, Micaiah said, you know, it doesn't matter what all the other prophets said. It doesn't matter what the kings want. What matters is what does God say? That should be our statement today is what has God said about how we worship him? What is it that God has said about what we do in our lives? We need to make sure that we understand that God is the one that we are to, to serve and not mankind. We're not to serve ourselves. And so many times we want to serve ourselves. Joshua 24. As Joshua is standing before the people, as they have come in and, and he's standing before the people and he's got a question for them. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The importance is don't serve man's God. Because there's a lot of men's gods out here. There's a lot of different ways that men say that you can serve God. But God said there's only one way. So we need to make sure that we stand as Joshua did. Men, we have a responsibility to our families. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Man, this is our responsibility. To stand up for what is right. To stand up for what is ready for God to understand that we are doing for Him. Are we the men that we should be? Do we stand up for the truth? We need to ask ourselves, what would we do if trials come to us. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What did they do when Nebuchadnezzar called them in because they had been told upon because they would not bow down? You know, as they stood before Nebuchadnezzar, said, but it, it needs to be known. We will serve the Lord. We will serve God. We're going to serve God no matter what. They said, you know, even if God doesn't pull us out of the fiery furnace, we're going to serve God. That will still be to his blessing. If he does pull us out, we're still going to serve God because that will be to his blessing. We as children of God here on this earth, we need to stand up and say, it will be to God's blessing whatever happens. Life is not always easy. It's not always good. But in the end, it will be wonderful. And we have to look at what comes out in the end. We need to be ready for what God has designed for each one of us. Ezra chapter 7 and verse 10. For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. Men and women, we've got to set our hearts to study the Word of God. If we don't study the Word of God, we won't know if it, someone's telling us the truth or not. We won't know the difference of what we should be doing and how we should be doing it. It should be important to each one of us to realize that we have a responsibility to ourselves and to God to open up His Word daily and to study upon his word. To hold fast. To stay with the pattern. To hold true. We live in a wicked world today. We live in a world that has condemned God every way it can. We live in a world today that there is so many so-called churches that people don't know who to serve or how to serve. 
or why to serve. And the reason is because they don't open up God's word and study for themselves. I had a friend that, that went out on a Bible study with a group like the Sojourners. And as they were studying with this one lady, they went into her house and he was telling her about baptism. And as he gets to Romans chapter 6, he's explaining the importance of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and the death, burial, and resurrection of us in baptism. And she said, my Bible don't say that. And he took her Bible and he looked at it and he said, yes, ma'am, it's right here. And she reached over and tore the page out of her Bible and she said, no, it don't say it. There are people that want to serve God that way. That want to serve God in the way that they want to. But we need to realize that as children of God, we've got to serve God the way that he's told us to do. We've got to hold fast to the sound words. In today's society, that's hard to do. In today's society, there are so many people that, that try to go the other way. And so it's important for each one of us to stop and ask ourselves, am I doing what God has asked me to do the way he's asked me to do it? Do I know the scriptures? Do I know why I believe what I believe? Do I know what the sound word is? Do I know the importance of the sound word? Can I give an answer to somebody when they come to me and ask? We all need to be able to, don't we? We all need to be able to answer it. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. It says, there is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way to death. As humans, we really don't understand how we should serve God without studying. We'll make up our ways. We'll do things the way that we want to do them. But the writer in Proverbs says, you know, the ways of man is death. It's a spiritual death. It's a separation from God. It's important for us all to realize that if we don't serve God the way he's asked us to, we cannot serve God in the way that he wants. We need to realize that when we come together, that we are to serve God in a pleasing manner. That we're to serve God in a way that he's asked us to. We're to preach the word. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. It's important that we realize that we are to preach the word, to teach. How many of us when we come together want to hear the word, the true word? The word that God has given to each one of us. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort, and complete patience and teaching. Are we ready? Are we ready when somebody asks us on the street why we're a Christian? Are we ready when we're on the street when somebody says, how come y'all don't use instrumental music? How come y'all take the Lord's Supper every first day of the week? Do we have the answers? We have got to have the answers. A lot of times people are asking us because they're looking for the answers. And we have got to be the people that will give them the answers. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8. We're to pray, it says, remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead, the offering to David and priests in my gospel, for which I suffered bound with chains for a criminal, but the words of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy. You know, it's important. Do we pray 
the remembering God in the service. The apostles prayed quite often. How's our prayer life? You know, it should be important that each one of us realize that, that we need to have a prayer life. It's important that we realize that we're to sing. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. Why sing? To admonish one another. To praise God. An instrument can't do that. An instrument can't teach. An instrument can't praise God. But we can. Why sing? Because it's been commanded to us to sing. It's been given to us that we are the children of God. Acts 20 and 7 tells us that we're to take of the Lord's Supper. Paul talked to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians about how to partake of the Lord's Supper. They had defied the Lord's Supper in all ways. It's important that we think about how we partake of the Lord's Supper. The truth of it. Why do we do it? To serve God. To commune with each other, but to commune with the Lord Jesus Christ himself every first day of the week. This is his table. This is his meal. And he has shared it with us. And we should share it with each other and with him. The importance of it. We need to realize that we don't understand holding to the word if we don't understand the importance of being a Christian. To be a Christian is we've got to hear the word of God. Not just with our ears, but with our hearts. How many of us hear the word of God? By looking in the scripture to make sure that what we believe is what God has said. How many of us believe the truth about Jesus Christ himself? That he came to this earth. That he died for our sins. That he's offered the salvation. How many of us believe that these words right here are written down so that we can understand how to have salvation? What do we believe? Do we confess our sins? When was the last time that we've heard somebody confess their sins to each other? You know, we've gotten into a society that we're ashamed to confess our sins because so many people talk. So many people condemn. The scriptures teach us we're to confess our sins to each other. Why? Not to condemn, to encourage, to strengthen, to uplift, to help. So we confess our sins. And have we put Christ on in baptism? You know, even the denomination world teaches about baptism. They don't do it in the right way, but they teach about baptism. Acts 22 and verse 16. You know, as, as Paul, let's back back up to 12, and Paul is talking about his baptism. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, the God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one and, know, and, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be witness for him to everyone 
of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you wait? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Calling on his name. Why baptism? To wash away our sins. It's not to be added to this church here. God does the adding. We don't do that. But if baptism is not for the right reason, God does not add us to his church. So we need to ask ourselves, do we truly hold to the pattern that's been given to us? Only each one of us can answer that for ourselves, can't we? It's important that we realize as members of the Lord's church that we have a responsibility to each other to help each other hold that pattern. I'm accountable for you and you're accountable for me. It's not to judge. It's to encourage. It's to uplift. It's to edify. It's to make sure that we all get to go to heaven. We all get to go home. This world's not our home. Some of us live like it is, but it's not our home. Our home is in heaven. This morning, if you're not a child of God, I pray that you've heard the word of God this morning. That will touch your heart. That you will believe that Jesus Christ left heaven to come this earth to die just for you. To take your sins away. He came for all of us, but he came for each individual person. If we don't take it and understand he individually came for me, we, won't, we will never understand the beauty of Christ. He died for our sins. Do you believe that? Do you repent of the sins that's in your life? Do you confess them before mankind and God? Put Christ on in baptism to have your sins washed away. This morning, if you need the prayers of the church, we ask that you come to me, stand and sing. take just a moment to say thank you to Kim, to Brother Kim. Uh, he spent time and preparation of his life to be able to come and uh, share the gospel with whomever. And while uh, James is making his way to the front before we close our time, uh, I would invite each of you to share with him personally. Uh, I would also ask Cliff and his bride <laughs> uh, to make your way to the back and greet the guest uh, uh, as they leave Cliff. 
and we would say welcome home to you. But thank you, Brother Kim, and to Mrs. Kim. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Kim. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for allowing us to gather one more time this week. Thank you, Father, for the wonderful weather you've given us. And thank you, Father, for all the blessings you've given us all through our lives. And Lord, we, ask, we thank you so much for the way that you bore the burden of Calvary that we might have everlasting life for ourselves. And Lord, we ask that you would bless Clifton and Penny with their new marriage. Bless them with many good years filled with good days. And Lord, we pray that we go forth in a, in a minute that we might be able to glorify you with, by the way we live our lives this week. We ask in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.